Hey guys, this is my shorts here and welcome to Temple Run 2 for my tablet of Android. Now I know I'm going to actually try 14 hour on XX on XX7 but the moment Fox News was messing because he deleted the video which is supposed to be on less to that video but not to worry I'm still going to act it Yep, the moment fog news made by on against the seven was messing. <laughs> now let's do this. Oh look at the toy. God damn, I missed that gem. Let's uh, take a look at the last try, first of all, which actually 
Obviously, just sit up here. You say very early on this is going to be a penalty try because of the knees going in. Ironically, Robert Hicks wrestled suitably for a foul with several incidents of knees and ankles going into tackles. There you go. This is the Sam Tompkins. Yeah, this is the Tonga try. Right, there you go. Yeah, and I think it's the right call. I said straight away, you know. Uh, it's hard for a defender because you're trying to stop a try, but you can't do that. You can't lead him with your knees. And love the play where Tommy Langston turned Bateman under. You know, he does that so well for Wigan. When he's coming against the grain like that, he's very hard to tackle. He's a very awkward runner, and that created the, the opportunity on the other side of the field, which has proved a very important try in, in terms of, obviously, the, the time they've scored and the equal score on. I just got split to our viewers who put all the time that really didn't get the ball down there, Colin. I think we're all agreed on that up here. But uh, with that, the left knee out comes across and knees him in the head. So it's a penalty in the actual score and it tries up. Absolutely the right decision. It's a strange one as well because he can give a penalty try from some real foul play. And the full back stays on the field, which is, if it's a try and it's such a foul piece of play. Is that a yellow card? I think yeah. a yellow card should be played there. You can't put your knees into something like that. Uh, let's go right back to the beginning then and look at the Sam Tompkins try and how England scored this. Well, it comes from a terrific last play, their first kick I think of the game and he puts some real hand time on the ball. He, he slams it up into the air and it becomes a competition then. If we look at the hand time, he gives plenty of the offensive people a chance to compete for the ball and that's all you're asking. They compete for the ball, he comes up with a good, finds some players in support, didn't quite get the ball away there, finds the off and there's numbers in the frame, you've got white people, all the black jumpers there on our screen going to cover the play and there's going to be a space out wide and Sam Tompkins doesn't need any invitations with that kind of space. Uh, great take from Tommy, great school from Johnny Lomax, that's one thing he's got, he's great he is, and he's just, you know, it's like a rugby union scrum half pass from, from him on that second phase and as Tommy said now, plenty of numbers and Sam Tompkins knows how to score. Great piece of skill, right here you go. Great place for Tommy to attack it. He comes through the ball, he gets off the ground, and it's great to see Sam score that try. Well, I, th I think a reflection of that, Mark, was that that was probably our first and best kick. We need a, a little bit more of that because I think then it's been a, if we were talking about the, the kicks of both teams, that I was a bit a little bit scruffy. I think Sam alluded to that half hour as well. So uh, we'll come up to some of the, uh, the errors that England have made or some of those poor kicks in just a moment. But take it back to New Zealand being incisive and he it, that was right wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think that's the right way around as well. <laughs> <laughs> on their attack with the first try from us. I think they clearly know what they do, they've, they've worked on some Michael Maguire combinations here and, and I think Nicarim is a key, Josh Oshin jumps in on him and he just leaves the space open for uh, Masters to come flying through on the inside, the, the space that it creates and the width of dummy half and then what's Hodgson here jumps in on the ball player. Elliot White has to make some assessments of who's coming out, who's going in, so he's not sure. And the space that's all up there is the free running. What you notice is that he's left centre to us in Barca, so they played the home away to take that one. They have two players with 40% of the field New Zealand, so it made it very hard for England to pick up who they wanted to take and, and well exploit upon New Zealand. Anyway, you're getting from Michael McGuire as well, you're getting the fact that he's talking about being patient, we've got to play, he's got two fantastic tries from set piece stuff and as a set play the centre coming out straight from the scrum to go to try get some pressure put some pressure keep holding the ball I think that's what Michael was saying to that Sam Tompkins there said it would have been good in patches and they need to they need to control it better and they have made mistakes everybody makes mistakes it's here it's great but you talk to a player like that and he can understand this and this that's the game but that happens straight away you've got to be able to keep on the ball you've got to make the right decisions it's a rush decision
running the ball a lot on the last, and he's a real dangerous run threat. But England are doing a very good job of defusing that. I don't think they're as dangerous as they can be. And, and then if you make those errors, at some point the opposition is going to come to your end of the field where you don't want it to be, which is what happened with McGill. They've got opportunities, and you can't miss a fantastic catch from McGill. He's got to play the ball, he's got to stay controlled there. That gives the opportunity here. What a fantastic play this is. You see the green there, he gets to Sam Tompkins, he skips, he skips over here, he skips over, straight over on Bateman. Tompkins has got to keep moving forward to shut the space down, he backs off and he opens, and he opens the space. It's a great time. The pace and the directness at times is, is what the, if you were a neutral, put it that way, it would be wonderful to watch. Oh, absolutely, you know, we spoke a lot about, um, you know, how dangerous uh, the other half is, you know, but, but to see the degree of speed, you know, he's an absolute run threat, and he would have looked up and saw him, he's against the ball, and thought, I'll take him on and, and get him better than most, and, you know, so let Sean Johnson to, to, to be a bit quiet having another half as a run threat. Absolutely agree with Justin there. Uh, Necker even just burns John Bentham for speed, and then Sam Tompkins worried, he was backing off, and that's to take a left ball, which opens up the space, but was it, was it, was it, I could say it without this call, so the left of the act is hits the right hole as well on the outside. The captain, 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 the captain. Let's talk to Robbie Hunter Paul, who I think we're all glad is a referee in this game, given some of his comments. Uh, Jordan, now first half, you're impartial, aren't you, Robbie? Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> Tell me what's impressed you about this New Zealand side. Tell me where you might have a concern going into the second half. You know what, uh, what I've liked about New Zealand are the little things that they're doing at the moment, uh, especially with kick pressure. We were talking about how England's kicks uh, just not been set up very, very well. But one of the things that they're rushing to it. So the little things like the kick pressure have been absolutely brilliant for New Zealand. Which, uh, which helped him in the changeover. But this set play is probably New Zealand. They've overplayed a couple of times, but the set play where we saw Marks go through and score absolutely straight out of the textbook there was. Everybody moving in motion. Uh, Cody Nicodemo playing all the way to the line, holding the defenders in, keeping the pivots there. And then look, when you got a guy like Sean Johnson, what does Elliot White here do? He kind of has to leave his post to get it, get out in front of him because we've seen what uh, uh, Sean Johnson been doing, been skipping over this, trying to get the edge on the players. So New Zealand have so many threats all over the field. I think they've been impatient a little bit though when they've been attacking the England line and they've overplayed a couple of times. Uh, they can probably slow things down a little bit and be a little bit more close and start working on that playbook once again. And I was going to say, should you be down to 12 then, but should you be down to 11? Yeah, I'm not, not going to say nothing yet. I don't say anything, I can't get into trouble. <laughs> right, uh, more from Robbie on commentary. A lot of time, Jonathan and Dave very shortly when the second half gets underway. But we have so much rugby of both toads coming this way this autumn. Been at the line that first half, and he's going to come off the field. 
Whoa, that was a lot of the achievement. I better turn this feed to say. I hope you guys and guys enjoy what of this. I hope you guys and guys enjoy watching of this video. Please leave comments below. Please subscribe and follow. Please subscribe and follow to my channel. It's ever new to me. Peace, men and shorts. I hope you enjoy it. Peace, men and shorts.